him when he returned to Capernaum after some days. It was reported that he was at home, and many were gathered together so that there was no more room, not even at the door, and he was preaching the word to them. And they came, bringing to him a paralytic carried by four men. And when they could not get near him because of the crowd, they removed the roof above him. And when they made an opening, they let down the bed on which the paralytic lay. And when Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralytic, My son, your sins are forgiven. Now some of the scribes were sitting there questioning in their hearts, Why does this man speak like that? He is blaspheming. Who can forgive sins but God alone? And immediately Jesus, perceiving in his spirit that they thus questioned within themselves, said to them, Why do you question these things in your hearts? Which is easier to say to the paralytic, Your sins are forgiven, or to say, Rise, take up your bed, and walk. But that you may know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins, he said to the paralytic, I say to you, Rise, pick up your bed, and go home. And he rose, and immediately picked up his bed, and went out before them all, so that they were all amazed and glorified God, saying, We never saw anything like this. In the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. Today's Gospel from Mark 2, from 1 to 12. And this is a very famous story, gets repeated throughout the year in the Coptic calendar. This is a story of faith. Exactly like it last time when we spoke about the woman from Tyre and Sidon, she had faith, and her faith healed her daughter. The faith today is the faith of four friends that allowed them to heal their friend. The story is our Lord was in a small town called Capernaum, small village, a lot of fishermen. He was in a small house, a lot of crowd, completely surrounded by people, and he was giving a sermon. And there were four friends who they have their fifth paralyzed from the neck down. It seems his hands and legs are paralyzed. We don't know for how long. And they decided they want to bring him under the feet of our Lord to heal him. Their faith was so strong. So what they did, they put him on a sheet. There is no real bed, a sheet. And they went to the door attempting at entering. And the first obstacle before their faith faced them. A lot of crowds and a lot of people told them, we want to watch, we want to hear. We can't let you go through. If I were them or if you were them, you could have said, I have done my duty to my friends. At least I tried. It's not my fault. If God wants to heal him, he should have paved the way. But their faith and their friendship were beyond our measure. They decided to go be the extra mile. They are not going home with their friend on a sheet anymore. They are only going to go home if their friend is walking with them. And at that point, they climbed over the roof. And in the past, it weren't really real ceiling. They were just sort of a lot of palm trees and mud and things like that. They climbed over and they sort of separated the palm trees from each other. And then slowly they brought down, each one holding one ribbon or one rope, they brought down the sheet with their friend on it. And of course, a lot of dust is coming on top of our Lord's head. A lot of people start getting angry. What is the disruption? Why now we are listening to our Lord? We don't want people to annoy us. And of course, the ceremony and the speech was stopped. But this guy slowly and carefully, after a lot of straining, a lot of panting, maybe a lot of hurting of their hands, maybe a lot of tremors because they are afraid to make him fall down, the guy was brought down in front of Jesus and Jesus was standing, looking at him, then looked up to him. And that's the main verse I would like you to know. 
When Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralytic, Son, your sins are forgiven you. When Jesus saw their faith, as if faith can be seen, faith can be heard, faith can be spoken of, and faith can be seen. Our Lord saw the faith in the heat of the moment, in the practice and the tiredness and the labor of those four friends. He saw the faith, their persistence of not letting go of their friends, on their determination to bring this person under the feet of God. He saw faith. He may even have seen the faith of the fifth, he said, when he saw their faith. Because the fifth person may have told him, get me home, are you going to flip me? You are going to make me fall down. I don't want to be broken. It's enough, I'm paralyzed. By him accepting the risk, the adventure, it's called faith. This man also is included in this verse, when he saw their faith. However, the problem, unfortunately, start to arise. As usual, the Pharisees and the scribes were sitting, and they reasoned within their hearts, saying, Why does this, this means Christ, why does this man speak blasphemies, blasphemies like this? Who can forgive sins but God alone? And they are right. They are absolutely right. He said, your sins are forgiven. He didn't tell him, get healed. He didn't tell him, pick up your bed and leave. The first sentence he mentioned, our Lord, your sins are forgiven. And rightly so, they said, who is this man who is saying your sins are forgiven? He has no right. The only one who has the right is God. And they are correct. Correct that God is the only one who forgives. But incorrect because they assumed he is not. And Christ showed his deity by two ways in this miracle. He showed that Jesus is God, number one, by forgiving sins, which a claim cannot be given except to God, and two, by him knowing the reasoning within their hearts. And our Lord, it says, but immediately when Jesus perceived in his spirit that they reasoned within themselves, he said to them, he started challenging them, why do you reason about these things in your hearts? Which is easier? Look at this question. Which is easier, to say to the paralytic, your sins are forgiven, or to say, arise, take up your bed and walk? Which is easier? For a simple answer, of course it's easier your sins are forgiven. Nobody sees anything. To them, it's easier to say your sins are forgiven. How would they know that this is truly happening? In their opinion, what is more difficult, get your bed, pick up your bed and leave, because that's a palpable evidence for the miracle. But actually for God, it's so easy to say, pick up your bed and go took him one word and he said it. Son, but you may know that the Son of Man has power on earth to forgive sins. He said to the paralytic, I say to you, arise, take up your bed and go to your house. And immediately he arose, took up his bed and went out in the presence of them all. So they were all amazed and glorified God saying, we never saw anything like that. He proved to them that if you want me to say the easy thing, you think sins are forgiven is easy, I am going to tell you what's easy. It's so easy for me. I am the great physician. Pick up your bed and leave. But what is so difficult, but you guys do not appreciate, is forgiveness of sins. Because that takes the blood of the Son of God on the wooden rod of the cross. That's when forgiveness of sins 
will actually occur. This man is forgiven his sins by the blood of Christ on the cross, which is easier, to heal a sickness or to forgive sins. We, a lot of times, pray for healing of people. Sometimes they get healed, sometimes they die. But how many times we pray for forgiveness of their sins, for repentance to be accepted, for a spiritual healing, because that's what matters, that's what difficult. To get healed today, you will be sick tomorrow, and eventually we will die. But to get healed spiritually today, and you eventually go to paradise, that's what's difficult, and that's what's built upon the sacrifice of our Lord on the cross. This man's faith proven correct that the only way to be healed is by forgiveness of sins. Our Lord, for him to cure him as a whole person, not just his nerves and muscles and joints, he gave two things. First, give him the forgiveness of sins, which is more important and harder. Second, heal them. And the healing was an evidence for the number one. Our Lord uttered the way, pick up your bed, for them to understand, I would have healed them by forgiving his sins. But since you will never get it, I will make him walk before you to know that I have power over forgiveness of sins. So the healing of sickness was an evidence for our Lord's ability to forgive our sins. This is the deity of our Lord. This is our Jesus Christ, the God incarnate. The God incarnate who has power and authority over sins and, of course, over sickness. The second lesson that I would like you to be aware of is really the four men. How do we apply that? Am I ever one of those four? Do I know a person who needs to be under the feet of Christ? Not just for healing the body or the bodily ailments, but he needs the forgiveness of sins. Did I ever participate with others to bring down a person under the feet of Christ? Or I only know from far, or I maximum reach to the door, and when the first obstacle happens, I say, I have done my work. How much we are not doing our job in fulfilling when he saw their faith. I wonder what our Lord looks at us and see. Does he say, I see your faith? Or will he say, I wish you have any level of faith? Faith is seen by acts. And the act of faith in this miracle is the four friends bringing their brother through the ceiling down into the presence of our Lord. Am I able to actually show my faith by actions? Or I'm just full of words. I keep saying, I believe, I believe. When, when somebody asks for help, or somebody even doesn't ask because he's paralyzed from the will, but I see that he needs the help of Christ, do I actually go bring him down with the help of others? And then at that time, you will be praised when Jesus says, I see your faith, my son. This miracle is an amazing miracle to show two important things. The first thing is faith is measurable. Faith is palpable. Faith is seen. And are we? able to show our faith with our actions? Are we able to bring our friends and brothers and sisters 
under the feet of our Lord or not. The second, the proof that Jesus is God through this miracle. Through number one, that he has power over forgiveness of sins. Two, because he has authority over paralysis. Three, because he knew what's in the heart of people and what they reason before they speak. Finally, this man left the house from the door, although he was brought down from the ceiling. He came down from the ceiling, but when he is going home, he went home through the gate, through the marvel and wonder of everyone in the room. How many people we have witnessed, we bring to God, to the altar, to the church, to the confession, and then we see them walking through the door. Christ is the door. They don't go through the ceiling anymore. We have brought them through troubles, tribulations. It wasn't easy to bring them in, but it's so pleasant to see one of us after you brought him through hardship that he's going home through the Christ door. And the servants or the friends, I would wonder they will be the second most joyful people in this miracle. The first most joyful, of course, is the paralyzed. He's walking, he's moving, he's going home. He has seen Christ, he has forgiven me. For his sins are forgiven. But the second most joyful group of people are the friends, the servants, the people who labored. And their labor completely forgotten. The scratch in their hands because of holding the rope was healed, forgotten. The panting and the sweating gone by them seeing their friends walking. They may have jumped down from the ceiling, meeting their friend, hugging kissing, going home, the five together, because they felt they have done a real good work. They brought a guy under the feet and he was healed through their little action. My friends, we may not be able to heal or to even forgive sins, but we certainly could bring a person under the feet of Christ. We are not able to do miracles, but we can bring people to the church, to the altar, where miracles can occur. I wish you always remember this verse. When Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralytic, Son, your sins are forgiven you. Glory be to God forever. Amen.